sector and businesses. In hearing from residents, oops, sorry. In hearing from residents, visioning and updating this plan, the goal is to ensure this vibrancy is not lost and decision of positive decisions and positive impact and community engagement remain throughout this process. My experiences in the food system sector started when I was little, when I would visit um, Mimi's farm or Spicknell's farm, which is right across the county line. I would be responsible for picking off the tips of the green beans and shucking lima beans and shucking corn with my mom. Growing up, I never identified as food insecure, but as I grew up I, and started to hear more terms and started to listen to different people's experiences, I started to realize that I was experiencing this myself, but also I had people around me that were experiencing this in different capacities. These experiences ranged from friends who were on free and reduced meal programs from kindergarten through 12th grade. This included personal shame or guilt around bringing a lunch from home, um, of course, to save money, or just because that's what my parents did for me. Friends who had um, never had that feeling or realizing that we were actually food insecure or that we were experiencing something of this magnitude or that would impact our lives this way. The intersections of food systems, planning and public health are very important and very necessary conversations. Terms like food apartheid, which replaces or is kind of a new term that most people may not be familiar with. It replaces food deserts and it was coined by activist Karen Washington, exposes that these communities were systemically and strategically designed to create communities of lack and limited resources, especially impacting predominantly communities of color. Neighborhoods considered food swamps placed or planned with predominantly fast food restaurants, convenience stores, or gas stations where access to fresh nutritious food is limited. The topic of food is a hyper-local issue, but it definitely will take a regional perspective and many different strategies to create solutions. Hopefully solutions that you'll be a part of during this conversation. Strategies that we're exploring, like looking at new developments for homes that include a space for people to grow their own food, programs and education surrounded around gardening, looking at expanding community garden programs in the county, and also supporting or tying in recreation department programs or working with boots on the ground organizations that allows for more space, more creativity, and more capacity building to create a new vision for our communities. The Montgomery County Planning Department and its wonderful team working on the Fairland Briggs Cheney Master Plan have been very intentional about these listening sessions. And I encourage each of you to go back and listen to the recording. And this is an opportunity to hear more from community members like yourselves. So decisions of impact and change can happen. We hope that you feel comfortable to share your perspectives today on this program or this listening session, again, entitled Food to Thrive. And I will be sharing more with you later on. I'm going to pass it over to Molly Jackson to take us into the rest of our program. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Michelle. That was beautiful, that was beautiful. I'm speechless, how do I follow that up, guys? Like, happy Friday, <laughs> that's how I can follow it up. It's Friday, we're here to have a conversation about food, good people, on very close to Thanksgiving. So um, I want us to get excited, I want us to get energized about this concept that we're talking about. How can we be sad? when we talk about food. I, I love food. I hope that you love food. And yes, we're going to sing happy birthday to one of the team members that we have here with us today, Ariana Grande, who is playing happy birthday in the background. You can keep that music going while I go. I was, I was doing it more the energy that you said, give us all energy. <laughs> Indeed. We wanted to say happy, happy, happy birthday to Ariana Grande to Ariana Ross, we, we really cannot thank you enough for helping us put these listening sessions together. We are very grateful for your energy in the room, myself included. And um, I just, I, birthdays mean 
a big deal to me and my family. So I just wanted to take take this opportunity to say thank you, thank you, thank you, and happy birthday, Ariana. This is from Story Tapestries. Good folks, if you haven't joined us for the last few listening sessions, we've been working with Story Tapestries um, to help us infuse this listening process, this listening experience with some art, with some fun to help inspire you. And I'm going to give you something to do in just a few minutes that will hopefully get the energy up in the, in the room. It's, it's the morning time, it's 10 o'clock. I know you're probably just grabbing your coffee, just waking up and joining us. And I wanna thank you for joining us. And if you, are, um, if you are joining us not for the first time, welcome back. And we appreciate you for, for staying in touch with us, for staying a part of this process. Um, the agenda is here. I'm going to do the introduction, which I'm doing right now. After the introduction, I'm going to pass it on to Story Tapestries to get us going in the right direction with a little bit of art infused into the conversation. Uh, the purpose for Story Tapestries, again, is to make this a fun experience, is to make this a real experience, to, to kind of transcend, if you will, the computer screen to be right there in your living room or your dining room or your office, if you're there. Um, and just make this something that is um, historic, something that is memorable. So get ready for the icebreaker. It's not coming up right away, but we're also going to do some breakout sessions so that we can hear from you directly. And we're going to come back into the main space and go over uh, what we've heard so far. So that you know that we're listening, which is the purpose. The listen is the purpose. And finding ways to bring your feedback into this planning process is always our intention. So. Um, like I said, I'm going to give you an activity to do right now because I want us to focus on food. Some of the things that we've been hearing about food in the community is that it's getting more and more expensive. The cost of living is going up. The cost of food is going up. Um, love it or like it or hate it, hate it or love it. A lot of people are talking about the Briggs Cheney Shopping Center and specifically the Global Foods grocery store. Um, I think a lot of folks are either loving it or hating it. They want to either go there or they want a new experience and they venture outside of the Fairland and Briggs Cheney area, maybe down to downtown Silver Spring or up to Columbia and Howard County, but they're going elsewhere to do their shopping. And we're trying to have conversations around the diversity of the food market in Fairland and Briggs Cheney. The map that you're seeing on the right side of the screen of this slide is the outline of the um, master plan boundary that we have. And um, I don't know if someone can point out to you where the Briggs Cheney Shopping Center is on this map, but uh, if my colleague could just hover over there, I don't know if she can, but I think if you're looking at this, you'll see, um, yep, thank you very much, I see the mouse. You'll see uh, the ICC 200, it's just shy north of I, the ICC Route 200. You'll see that um, the notable thing in the landscape is the um, Auto Mall and right just north of the Auto Mall is the Briggs Cheney Shopping Center. A lot of folks are commenting about the fact that they would like more competitive retail options in, in that space. This space is coming kind of um, meaning to us or coming across to us as if it's the downtown of the community, the place where people kind of congregate when they have no place to go. And that's one of the things that we keep hearing too, is that there's not a lot of places to go for entertainment, for arts and culture, and a, a cultural experience, a community experience, a communal experience. There's not a lot of places for that in the Fairland and Briggs Cheney community. So I'm giving you this activity, good people. Let's let's shake off the jitters. Let's get into this uh, listening session. I want you to go either run or draw. If you, if you can't get up from your space, just go run or draw an item that represents food, fun, and family. And I'll give you an example because I have one right here next to me. It's my breakfast. My breakfast is in a bowl, good people. A bowl for me is usually meaning that something hot or something savory is going to be enjoyed in a bowl. And also I have my grapefruit, which is my breakfast this morning. It's what I call in my family, COVID fighting food. So we are using food in my family as a nourishing source to, to prevent from you know, disease and flu, which is very prevalent around this time of year. So we're giving you this opportunity to go run. You have like 30 seconds. Ariana, I see that you want to jump into this. Yeah. Can I add minutes. something? Can Absolutely. I add something? Absolutely. So when you're going around and you're finding a food, so think about something like she said, family fun, community, but also it could be something funny that something in some ways that like 
for example, I like avocados and I, I already I ate some of my avocado, but my for my I love savory avocados. Like I love avocados with spices. My husband likes sweet. He takes an avocado and he mixes like milk and sugar with it and makes like literally like a paste that he eats. It's like ice cream. And I think it, I'm not gonna lie, I think it's gross. So it could be something that in your family has like double meaning. Um, or it also could be something that you wished Fairland, Briggs Cheney area, you could get access to it. Like there is a there is a food that we love. We can only get it when we go to New Jersey. New Jersey, there's a really large Brazilian community. We cannot find this particular food in any of Maryland, any of the Brazilian stores. We can only find it there. So something you wished you had to to add to this picture. So are we putting on music for the 30 seconds? Yeah, yeah, Hold 30 second around. music. Go, go. Everybody find something now. You got 30 seconds. Go, quick. Right, we need another. I need another Stevie Wonder <laughs> song, though. Stevie Wonder song. Give me it's one. It's now 1014. We're giving you until uh, 1015. Everybody go and find something. Anything related. Stevie Fun. Wonder is good. Anything Stevie Wonder is always good on the Friday. <laughs> Hold on. This is always the ad first. I was seconds. about to say, that's not Stevie Wonder. I know. <laughs> Couple more seconds, good people. Hopefully you're finding stuff and you're able to um, turn your screen on if you're if you're drawing something so that you can show your drawing for us. Don't mind. Yeah, it's Friday, good people. Yes, you're gonna make me sing in here. <laughs> <laughs> It is now 10.15. You don't want me singing. I cannot sing. <laughs> it's not a good concept. It is now 10.15, and we want to give you the opportunity. Everybody, if you have something that you would like to share with us, just raise your hand. Use the raise your hand feature are you, in Zoom. Are you, Moline, are you able to stop sharing your screen for a second? If someone stops sharing, then we'll be able to see everybody on the gallery view easier. Sure, that sounds like a great idea. Everyone, if you can also just turn on your cameras, we welcome that if you feel comfortable. I see, is it um, a cast? I'm gonna butcher this name, please forgive me already. <laughs> you know, because you're smiling and laughing. You go ahead and tell me your name so I don't mispronounce it, but I love no it to learn. No worries, my name is Jossiel Stamp. Jasio, thank yeah. you for volunteering. What do you got for us? Um, although it is very early, I have a bottle of wine. Oh yeah, it's Friday, y'all. <laughs> because I would love for there to be a wine bar or something kind of a yeah, no, like literally a wine bar or something like that. Um, my friends and family, we love to visit the wineries that are local, but I would love to just be able to have those Sunday evenings where I can stay closer to home and not have to go downtown to downtown Silver Spring or Olney or Rockville. Yeah. Yes, that was that's awesome. That's fabulous, yeah. Yes, Heather, I see your hand is up. Thank you so much, Heather. Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm Heather Breskin with the Food Council. Um, I have here an item that my kids, oh, I got to, there we go. Um, my kids love, but they're in Jera Crisps from Siona Foods. Um, and it's a, one of our Moco made business partners. Um, and Sion Billette is the um, owner of the business. Um, so it's a product that my family enjoys, especially for festive occasions. And, and they're basically kind of <clears throat> chips or crisps made from, um, from injera bread. Um, and so I love that our Moco made businesses really reflect the diverse food traditions of our, um, of our county residents and they're also delicious. So. And that's, available. that's Ethiopia, right? Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Ethiopian, I love Ethiopian yeah. flatbread, <laughs> but Indeed. it's a totally innovative product and they serve them with lots of lentil dips, um, that my kids really enjoy too. And I think don't really realize how, that they're pretty healthy too. So <laughs> even thank better. you so much for sharing. I see Vanessa's hand up. Vanessa, tell us what you got. Good morning, everybody. Um, I, I couldn't decide, but at the last minute I grabbed, um, I don't know if you can see it. I grabbed some eggs from our chickens. Oh, wow. and it, I don't know how to, yeah, um, that has been the highlight of our summer is getting our new baby chickens and working with the two other families that we share these chickens with. It's been a, a good time learning, getting cussed out by chickens. That happens. Uh, That's a thing. Uh, <laughs> and hey, to just see how their personalities have grown and that 
we don't have to refrigerate our eggs. They kind of just sit on the counter now. So that was a learning experience for me and the kids. And it just brings us a lot of joy. Yeah, we're learning already Friday, good people. It is Friday. Vanessa just taught us that you do not need to refrigerate your eggs if they're the right type of eggs. (laughs) Word to the wise. <laughs> I have a question. Can we, if you're not willing to raise your hand or want to speak or share, please, please turn your camera on for a hot second. Just hold your food up to, and Michelle, will you take a screenshot? Um, just like everybody just that. hold their food up to the camera, up Dawn. to your camera. <laughs> hold it up. I see Don's food. Oh my goodness. I see Patrick. I love I it. Tea. I love it. Can Ooh. somebody else take one so I can put my food up? Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Is someone doing that? Okay, I don't know how to take it. Isn't that funny? The only thing I don't know how to do is a screenshot. Okay. I'll take it. Awesome. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. A screenshot. Everybody, food on a Friday. Look. Look at us. Okay, We're doing it. <laughs> it looks like well, coffee. Philip, is that coffee? Got it. it Thank you so coffee. much, Lauren. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to keep this moving. Don't, don't worry. We're going to keep this moving along. Um, I want to also just mention real quick, that we do have, um, we're going to be doing breakout sessions and uh, we're going to be doing um, everything that we did in the last um, few sessions. But I just want to give you a heads up if you're in those breakout rooms. We have two breakout rooms that you'll be going to in just a few minutes. Um, and before you do that, Story Tapestries is going to get us even more warmed up, bring the energy, bring the juice. So but in your breakout sessions, though, you'll have a note taker and a facilitator. And sometimes the note taker is also working what we call a jam board. You do not have to worry about working the jam board. We will take over the task of working the jam board for you. We just want you to bring your ideas. We want to bring bring the um, the feedback that you want us to hear about the Fairland and Briggs Cheney community. Okay. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to our 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 co-hosting uh, folks and. We're going to come back because I want to do a quick interview with a few of our food experts in the room. So bring it back to me after you after you finish with the quick poll first and then our warm up exercise. Ariana. Also, I feel like we've already started to warm up. So I want to do a quick time check because this was part of our warm up was to do that kind of thing. So we have about 10 more minutes, would you say, Maline, or five? 10 more minutes is great. Okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. So, is there a food in your space that you wait, have? Wait, wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, poll first. Hi, everybody. Poll first. I'm Michelle Faulkner Forsen, uh, Partnerships and Innovations Director with Story Tapestries. And before we get started with all the extra fun stuff, I'm going to do a quick poll. So, on your screen now, you should see um, a couple of questions. I'll read through them. You go ahead and answer. Are you a resident of Fairland or Briggs Cheney? Do you work or shop in Briggs Cheney? Do you use public transportation? Uh, What is your age? Don't be shy, it's okay. Uh, Do you speak more than one language? Where were you born? And lastly, what is your race, ethnicity? All right, we should have those poll responses in shortly. As soon as somebody answers the questions. <laughs> Michelle, I started to answer them and then it went away. Did you get yeah. my response? I got nothing. Okay, let so, me try. Okay, yeah. yeah. And press the submit button. I don't know if you pressed that. Were you able to press that? I see people are voting now. I see more and more people. I did see that folks were voting before. So thank you for your patience. Awesome. These things are an adventure. Sometimes they work seamlessly (laughs) and other times it's like the Lufus computer thing that exists. Yes. Yes. Computers don't care about us. (laughs) Makes me think of that. Do you remember the original computer movie, The How? Wow. I'm old. I just old my No, name. you got to tell me the name of that. There, there's this movie that had the, I think it was like Howie or something. And it, yeah, old. But that's okay, I like being old. All right, and we got our results in. So everybody sees who's in the room. And now I will pass it on to my colleague and um, a facilitator for the fun stuff. And I will be assisting as well, um, I was like, Ariana Ross. 
We're um, here. We already did. We already sort of did the fun stuff. Um, but Michelle, I know that yes. you had something in particular that you a food that you sh that you share. <laughs> I did. I yes, did. You had so. So here's the thing. I want you to think about a food in your space that for you is a food that represents relaxation. So honestly, like the wine bar to me represents relaxation, but is there a food that represents totally chilling, the kind of thing that you would you would have? And what I want you to do is think for a second, how could you describe it without ever, without saying what it is? So for me, if I was gonna describe the food for me that represents total relaxation, and don't put it in the chat yet, yet, don't put not it, do not put it in the chat just yet. Okay, mine would be sweet, luscious, and please forgive my spelling, uh, melt in your mouth. Ooh. I know what you say. Uh, <laughs> bite, bite sized pieces. Okay, oh, and I think I said, you, yep, your mouth, I didn't say youth mouth. All right. Uh -huh. Now, what is your, what is the thing that you love most? Do not put it in the chat at all. Think for a second, what is the thing that you love the most? See if you can describe it and give a hint at it, which gives us, puts us in the flavor, right? Mm -hmm. So, puts us in the flavor. Michelle, do you have something that you could say that would describe your favorite food or something that you love that you relax with? That you oh. With? Um, or chill with at the end of the day. I like a, okay, so I'll have to describe it. It's bubbly. <laughs> it's bubbly and tasty. But um, is it bubbly and tangy or bubbly and hmm. like, and bubbly and like, like guy okay. that's bubbly could in my brain, in my household might be beer, like versus bubbly, yeah. I'm, I'm open, I'm open. Oh. <laughs> so, bubbly. <laughs> bubbly stuff. So here's what's gonna happen. Give me a thumbs up when you've got something or a smiley face or something at all that you could, or you know what I mean? Anything at all. And it doesn't have to be a gigantic long description. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say five, four, three, two, one. And then you are going to, we're gonna sort of post it all at once, which is like a waterfall. It'll show up really, really fast. Okay, so ready, everybody in. And don't feel shy, like anything at all. There's no like, I'm gonna put another item in there when I do mine. So five. Four, three, two, one. If you can please add your favorite luscious something. Ooh, ooh, so, nice. Anybody else, anybody else, anybody else? Quick, please put some, a few more things in. Nice, I'm gonna read it all at once once we got refreshing. Hot. Ooh, nice. These are all yummy. Ooh, I really wanna go bake. I just, that's really what I, I wanna look, do. Look, I, I saw flaky, buttery. I'm like, dang. Hey. Come on. If we read it, we're going to read it in some ways and read it all together. So we start at the top. It's sweet, luscious, melt in your mouth, bite-sized pieces. The entire sweet potato pie. Ooh, we only usually make during the holidays, so it's special. I mean, it's holiday break, but I love that it's the entire. She didn't say that she was going to have a piece. She's going to have the entire thing for herself. Um, that's that's self-care. Yes. Salty, crunchy, gooey, nutty, deep, fried, salty, starchy, silk smooth, warm from the inside out, warm, foamy latte. It's mm. sweet, fresh, sour, aromatic, and chewy, warm, spiced drink, refreshing, hot, spicy, ginger tea, flaky, buttery, sweet, salty. Mm. If I can do it like, 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 had guide, yeah, all in one breath. Um, mm. Slow cooked, seamy, seasoned, crunchy, sweet, scrunches, chocolatey, Warm, smooth, foamy, like a hug in a mug. Oh, I'm totally stealing that, Michelle. <laughs> Sundays with crunch brownies. Spicy foo foo. I want foo foo. I'm with you. I want yeah, spicy foo foo. Wait now. Yeah, is that see? Is yeah, that talk about that. Mohammed. Yeah. What is that? Talk about it. Um, I'll, I'll get I'll get to you later. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> okay, with okra and palm oil, mm -mm -mm. spicy, mm -hmm. spicy, uh, spice, creamy, spicy yam. Mm -hmm. Yes. So as we dive into the food security, um, you know, food security can be a super serious topic, right? Because it is there are a lot of people who are not food secure. I know that Story Tapestries, we go into the community and work with kids that during this time really struggled with food. 
So know that bring your thoughtful energy as well as your piped up energy because the way we shift food security and the way we identify how we can make our communities more food secure is by figuring out how we can not just put food in their hands, but these kinds of foods in their hands. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. to me, food security represents, my husband is gonna make some, well, he's making a bolo giant bean. In English, that's like a yucca cake, which doesn't really sound delicious to everybody else, but it is amazing for my birthday. But that is food security. The fact that we are able to find that food, go get it, means so much to me more than anything else. Mm -hmm. So just think about how we can add those pieces. Marlene, I'm going to pass it on. I could do more, but I know that, you know. You, you did so much already. You've got us going. Thank you so much, Ariana. Thank you so much, Michelle. This is exactly what we need. This is what we need. And I want to remind you while we're having a good time, like Ariana said, this, these things matter. And so I, I want to do a quick little interview while I tell you a little bit about what we've been hearing at the same time and introduce some of our experts that we do have in our room. Thank you so much for joining us. We have asked them to join us, join us in this conversation so they can add value to why this even matters to the planning department. So I'm going to ask Michelle. Michelle first, you're up first, my dear. Um, there's some work that you're doing in the Edgewood Neighborhood Park. Would you mind sharing a little bit about the community garden that is potentially happening in one of the places for which good people we will be at this Saturday, shameless plug, if you're if you're wanting to meet us in person, we will be doing a pop up in the uh, Edgewood neighborhood park to talk about this very topic and all of the topics we've talked about so far. But Michelle, what do you think? Um, can you tell us, share with us a little bit about what's happening at Edgewood neighborhood park these days? Sure, um, I'm sorry, I got confused for a second since there are two Michelles. <laughs> Um, so again, everyone, my name is Michelle Nelson and I manage the community garden program with um, Montgomery Parks, which is part of um, Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission, a mouthful, but i um, glad to be here. And we are currently um, planning for a community meeting to happen in regards to the community garden proposed at Edgewood Neighborhood Park. Um, so the community garden program and working with other divisions, the park planning and stewardship division actually um, did a site suitability study um, for specifically community gardens. So the site suitability studies are conducted for different urban park elements within the county. So they may look at amenities like community gardens, like skate parks, like dog parks. And all this different type of criteria go into what, you know, may prioritize different parks or different communities for different amenities. Um, so as we were doing this, you know, site suitability study, we had different criteria. Um, obviously for a community garden, we're looking at a site that has vibrant open space, access to water, um, you know, we're looking for a community that may need it most, which is a different spin or a different strategy that we're looking at for our program, which we we have considered in the past, but um, we're really trying to make that the fabric of our program moving forward. So we have one community garden that is in Briggs Cheney is our largest and one of our oldest community gardens. Um, there are 120 plots there, but they're really, 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 really big. Um, they're all 625 square feet, which I will candidly say is larger than my apartment. So we are looking at different typologies with our community garden program. So at Edgewood, we are actually looking at a smaller space. The entire footprint of the space is 4,000 square feet. And we are looking to make this community, this community garden and this community um, more, we're trying to create a space where people or families can learn to grow food, they can succeed and they can fail without feeling like this major burden of, you know, oh my gosh, 625 square feet is so overwhelming. Um, how can I keep up with that? So in our, our offering, we are looking at spaces that are under 50 square feet um, and they are gonna be in-ground plots. They're still gonna be in-ground so people can use different techniques like square foot gardening um, or still grow some of the staples that maybe they cannot get 
in the grocery store. Um, and hopefully it will be an opportunity for cultures and families to exchange an opportunity to um, activate and just create a safe space for, for families to come and gather. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Michelle. I, I know that Brittany Drakeford is on the, on the line too. I wanna to bring her into the conversation with our sister agency in Prince George's County. What's going on with Prince George's County? I know that there's a lot, there's a huge initiative, a huge push to have health be a part of the planning process. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Brittany? Yeah, so thank you so much, Molly, for the opportunity just to share with you some projects that we're working on. Um, in Prince George's County, we've been taking the lead from uh, Montgomery County as our uh, sister and peer agency. Uh, so the department has um, recently following um, the death of George, George Floyd, uh, the department has started to take some initial, initial and some additional research in looking at some of the intersections between uh, health and racial equity. Um, so doing some GIS mapping to, to measure um, overall health outcomes um, and as it relates to uh, the demographics of the community. Uh, a large portion of that ends up being uh, food access. Uh, so, you know, they're saying that your zip code is more important than your genetic code. And a significant driver of some of those are the built of people's overall health outcomes are the built environment. Uh, so last year, in partnership with the Prince George's County Council and the Prince George's County Health Department, uh, we worked to develop a, a food equity and health a food equity map um, and develop a methodology for identifying healthy food priority areas in the community. And the healthy food priority areas uh, map uh, looks at a variety of different components, so not just uh, food access, but it also looks at, of course, some of these other social demographic factors as well. Um, uh, the county or uh, the department has been working at least for a decade in doing food systems planning and food systems mapping. So Google Reyes has been a really key, um, who's formerly of the planning department, she retired a few years ago, um, has been doing research into everything from um, identifying, again, where healthy food priority areas are, developing new strategies for increasing urban agriculture, um, we worked with the University of Maryland uh, last year through their PALS initiative uh, to develop a program for uh, reusing vacant spaces in the community. Um, so um, as Michelle talked about some of the traditional community gardens, uh, we had also looked at uh, what would it look like to reclaim vacant buildings to do aquaponics or hydroponics, um, which would be a way to try to uh, solve two problems. So vacant spaces and then also um, food access in the community. Uh, so there's still a lot more work to be done and we're still doing a lot more research, um, but hopefully, I don't know if there are any other questions, but. Nope, that's it. We're just keeping this fast. This is a hot, <laughs> this is a hot fast interview. Um, Catherine Nelson, could you tell us a little bit about the climate action change and if there's any mention or any intersection between food and land use practices with climate action? Catherine Nelson, are you there? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm working on the Briggs Cheney Master Plan along with the rest of the team, focusing on environmental issues. And yes, there is so much in the Climate Action Plan about food systems and, and food security. Um, you know, there's a recognition that there may be issues with uh, the provision of food because of climate droughts, uh, too much water, the change in um, uh, temperatures that we're not used to with our normal crops. Uh, so with that recognition, um, the Climate Action Plan recommends um, putting a lot of resources towards things like expanding community gardens, assisting residents um, so that they can grow their own food, um, expanding farmers markets for the uh, local resources, um, also community supported agriculture programs where you can actually partner with a local farmer. Um, and also um, providing resources to make sure that there is affordable food um, access to that in, in every location in the county. There's also talk of uh, uh, helping agriculture. You know, we have this big agriculture reserve which is part of it is very near to uh, this area. Um, to, to help them with processing and shared kitchens and um, just increase the ability to produce that local food. So I, I could go on and on. Um, um, Thank you so much, Catherine. That's, that is good. That is really good. I want to make two points. 
One, I want to acknowledge your work with our department specifically, Catherine Nelson, for those of you who don't know, she was one of, she was very instrumental in us having a, a community garden at the, our Silver Spring location, which is our old location. And she has a lot of expertise when it comes to not only environmental issues, but gardening. So I wanna acknowledge your presence in the room and thank you, thank you, thank you for, for bringing mm -hmm. that type of an idea to our commission, to our department. Um, I also want to let you know that yes, like Catherine said, this, this community was actually founded by farmers. Um, African American farmers way back in the day when they got their freedom papers, and uh, they didn't actually come in papers, but when they got their freedom, um, they they decided to start farming in this community, the Carolina and Briggs Cheney community. So it has roots in this community. And I wanted to bring in our stakeholders here. Um, there's a few stakeholders that I want to call out specifically. Arthur, thank you so much for being a part of the Spring Speaker Series. Um, Heather. Uh, Breskin, who's with um, the Montgomery County Food Council, and Vanessa Pierre, who is one of my favorites as well. I ask you all three the same question, the exact same question. What does a healthy food system look like? And any one of you can jump in there, but please make it concise because we're at 1039 and we want to get to our small breakout sessions. But I wanted people to have this information up front so that they could talk about it in their smaller groups. Any one of you could go first. I can lead this one. <clears throat> I had a bunch of points. I'm going to stick it to the two mo the two things that I think are most important. For me, a healthy food system is rooted in communities that have shared goals and that the people that are working with these communities make sure that communities that have buy-in through every part of the process. It means um, that it's hyper-local, that you know where your food is coming from and your food isn't coming from across the country, um, that you know and have a deep relationship with the people who grow your food. Uh, I think it's very important that uh, anybody who is serving the community has uh, some skin in the game. And I often find that a lot of areas, uh, especially in underserved communities, the business owners, uh, the, 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 the giants and, you know, the, those folks that are providing food don't even live in these neighborhoods. So I think that that is super important. And I think healthy food systems include empowered families and how we do that is, um, you know, especially through my organization's exposure. Um, it's actually making sure that they have a seat at the table and that they are making the process of choosing what is culturally appropriate and all these other circuit words that we that we <laughs> throw out there actually make it to the shelves. Um, and that if just like community gardens and farmers markets, that all of these empower our families to create healthy food systems by creating economic opportunities and opportunities to fill the gaps through community gardens when stores aren't providing or are unable to provide the things that are really important to them. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Um, Heather or um, Agar, do you want to jump in? Man of Food, I know that you guys are here. I see Jenna. I saw Jenna. I saw Jackie. Agar, are you there? I'm here, Molly. Also, Sorry to be off camera. No. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I would just uh, echo what Vanessa just said about culturally appropriate food. Because for me, um, to be able to uh, provide healthy food for to people, it means that people also like the kind of food that we are providing. Uh, sometimes it seems like we, we just receive whatever um, people give us uh, without asking our, 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 our concern about what they, they are providing. So it would be good to uh, have this community bound have, have people uh, saying something like this kind of listening session where people can talk about what they would like to see. Yeah, so that is my point. Thank you. Thank you, Agar. Heather? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Agar and Vanessa already captured many of my thoughts beautifully. The only two things I might add are uh, that, uh, you know, a truly healthy food system really values food. Uh, and I think it's a national crisis that we tremendously undervalue um, what food costs from a, from a price point and really the central role that it plays in everybody's life. Um, and so having systems that truly, you know, center nutrition, 
culturally appropriateness, just as, as has already been shared, um, local and sustainability of all of those pieces, um, and, and the systems financially support the production and equitable distribution of those foods, I think is critically important. And also recognizing the tremendous economic opportunity through entrepreneurship, through workforce development um, that is inherent in food and in the food system. Um, and then the other piece, as Vanessa already shared, that um, thinking about it from a policy and advocacy perspective, that we have much stronger ties between um, all residents and all consumers and the policies and programs that are put in place um, that are tied to the food system because we have a real disconnect um, between you know legislation that is is designed to build healthy food systems and connecting the expertise um, and knowledge of the of the residents and communities that they're designed to support so I think those would be two pieces that that I think are important too. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. Um, don't don't be surprised if that becomes a soundbite. Um, so <laughs> I want to say, first of all, thank you so much for this quick rapid fire interview. But if you are not warmed up by now, this is the time that we're going to be separating you into the smaller breakout sessions. And I want to acknowledge Philip is making all of this happen. He's our producer, also my co-lead on the master plan. Thank you so much, Philip. Um, our breakout session should be ready to go and you're gonna get in smaller groups. I wanna encourage you, if you can, if you feel comfortable, share your face so that we can put a name with a name, a face with a name and a name with a face and that you can meet your colleagues, your coworkers, your new friends in your smaller spaces. So um, when you get your invitation, please accept it. Like I said, you'll have a facilitator, note taker, and Jamboard in your breakout. All right, I see folks are making their way back into the main space here. And more people are joining us. I'm hoping that conversations went well. It sounded like from my end that conversations were going well. And I want to welcome you back into the main space. Hopefully more people have turned their cameras on and we can see their lovely faces here. I wanna thank you. Thank you, thank you for staying here with us in this space. So it's so easy to drop off and be like, I'm done. <laughs> but thank you for staying here with us in this space and continuing the dialogue. I am gonna turn it over to Story Tapestries to maybe facilitate some of the debrief that we have been um, from the great conversations in the breakout sessions. I will say that the note takers, if you don't mind stepping up and kind of giving us your biggest, greatest takeaways. Um, Ariana, are you leading this part or Michelle? Yeah, um, so we were just essentially, one of the things I was gonna ask was just simply who, so we'd start with the yellow, the fabulous yellow human being um, for the food described, describe any food traditions you may have, where do you shop for food and dine out and why, what are your challenges to eating fresh and healthy nourishing foods? Could our fabulous uh, person who did the yellow um, just kind of give a quick summary? I'm writing stuff down to create something. So Jamie took the notes, but I'll um, go ahead and summarize it. So we are the Amazing Yellow Group. Um, we had a very diverse group. We had um, people from India, Ghana, um, Jamaica. And for the most part, they have to go to different grocery stores to get what they desire. So like different spices and different... Um, foods that aren't, aren't necessarily located um, in their area. So they did have to travel um, elsewhere to get the, um, the ingredients that they want to cook with. Um, and for the most part, sorry, I'm reading it as someone's moving it. Um, they, they love taking advantage of the international food sections and like a giant and safe way. But again, nothing compares to the actual international supermarkets at um, Global and um, Mana. So that was pretty much what we had for, um, for this uh, jam board. Awesome. So the pink group, the pink group. Who is the writer for the pink group? And I apologize if someone noticed someone named Natalie. That is my mom. She was using my computer and I somehow managed to open the jam board as my mother. So don't get worried that Natalie Ross is a phantom on the jam board. Um, so could someone uh, please, uh, from the pink group, who would be the note taker for the pink group and willing to speak up and share? Sure. For, uh, I think for the pink group, that was myself and Lisa. Um, uh, we uh, uh, were the pink group. Uh, we had a really good uh, conversation, good discussion 
um, about all the different needs um, for the study area. Um, just one second while I bring up some of the notes. Um, at least I don't know if you, you would want to share as well. Um, but, you know, there were a sure. couple of... Uh, oh. No, sorry, I couldn't find the unmute me button. I was going to say the same thing, that we had a really great conversation about how it sounds like, um, you know, when we had the intro, we talked about the importance of having culturally appropriate food, and it seems like there seems to be a, a lack of that in this area. We talked about um, the global foods is there, but it's not inclusive for Caribbean food, and the food they do have is really expensive. Um, and that, you know, Giant is kind of like the last resort, but they do have some things. And I think it just really highlighted, um, you know, what we had already been talking about. And I think that it was just a really great conversation about also how there's, you know, not a big draw for restaurants, but, you know, that could potentially change. Um, and then we talked about, you know, working with, there's someone working with White Oak to bring a farmer's market there, and that could potentially serve the Fairland Brick Cheney area, because we talked about what a you know, what a service these farmers markets do for the community, but the closest one right now is probably in downtown Silver Spring, which kind of is a wine and cheese crowd and not necessarily, you know, appropriate food. So those are some of the things we talked about. I feel like Lisa, you jumped to the next slide already, which is pretty freaking awesome. Oh, uh, yeah, no, 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 hey. You were like already on this. So is there anything, we'll, we'll start with the, uh, we'll start with the incredible pink. Um, I need to find something uh, pinkalicious. Um, so if there's anything you want to add from this slide, which is focused on the HOA and the chickens with friends. I really like the chickens with friends personally. I want chickens. But with anything? friends. <laughs> <laughs> we talked a lot about, you know, gardening um, and the importance of what I thought was a really profound thing that saying is, you know, someone was hosting gardening classes after school and that kids could influence their parents' buying choices. So having classes after school where, you know, kids are introduced to a lot of produce and how easy it is um, to really garden, especially with the help of these classes that it can really help create, you know, habits. So I think that was really important. We also talked about taking advantage of other you know, non-traditional green spaces um, like HOA land, but that's something that we're going to have to look into with the county. Um, and it, again, I just want to say it was a really great conversation about, you know, the importance of gardening and farmers markets and the need to provide appropriate food and healthy food for this community. John, you have anything to add? Yeah, just want to... <clears throat> Mentioned like the, the infrastructure and the challenges uh, to, you know, to create farmers markets as well. We had a really good education um, from Brittany Drakeford about that. Um, so it, it's something that we'll definitely have to like look into and discuss more because it's a, a bigger issue um, that was going to, you know, the county health, business association, everyone, just a whole, um, a lot of different factors that uh, it's more complicated than initially thought. So there are some challenges there. Excellent. Our amazing yellow team. Yep. So from the yellow team, um, for the most part, they feel like it's um, it's getting groceries and food is really inconvenient, especially using uh, public transportation along um, Route 29. So just getting on the bus with groceries is just inconvenient for people. Um, we do have some like resources that were dropped in the link from the Food Council Committee food access report. So feel free to take um, a look at that report just to get a better understanding of the, the access challenges um, in this area. Um, it was brought up that um, more um, farmers markets and pop-up choice markets are needed um, in this area. And um, that's, that's what we had as well. And we also trying to uh, touch up a little bit on the community gardens issue, uh, but our, um, our resident in our breakout group, Priya, they are now, she's now really practiced um, community gardening, but I think by the end of our conversation, Michelle, do have something wanted to address on this one. And I, Call on for Michelle Nelson. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I think like in the last couple of seconds of the breakout room, I was uh, uh, called out in terms of just uh, what does it look like for people who are interested in community gardening in this area? 
Um, and I did also want to, I failed to mention earlier that another reason why Edgewood was a um, top candidate for um, a community garden is because we were, we, we utilized the data from um, Foodstat, which is a tool that was created with the Food Council um, and the County Statistician's Office to kind of examine and, and bring a whole bunch of barriers um, and analyze them or examine a whole bunch of barriers, analyze them and crank out a food insecurity rate. And so um, this particular community um, or this particular census tract had a food insecurity rate of over 20%, which is why it really rose to the top for um, why we thought that this this area um, could potentially be an area where we could try a pilot model or even address um, food insecurity through community gardening. So, um, you know, we, we do have the Briggs Cheney community garden that's on the other side. A lot of that community garden is really, really, really representative of the community. Um, there are gardeners from India, Pakistan, um, Kenya, Ethiopia, uh, Jamaica, it, it, just about anywhere, um, and anybody or any culture that we have within Montgomery County is probably represented at that community garden. Um, so it's a really vibrant space, and they are growing a lot of their own personal, culturally appropriate food. So we will love to see that happen more in other communities um, through different community gardening efforts. So. We do have a wait list um, and we do track that information. I can't remember the numbers right now off the top of my head, but I can share that information with the team um, to kind of provide just the overview of kind of who's interested in Briggs Cheney um, and how, like what our methodology would be to kind of getting folks um, placed into these new sites. That's so awesome. Um, I want to say yes to what you just said. We do want to um, stay in touch. We want you to help us think through how we can incorporate food into a master plan, which is some kind of uncharted territories for us planners here. And so as much as you can provide information, both Michelle and Brittany, um, keep us posted on what's happening in Prince George's County as we navigate these uncharted territories. I will Thank Agar who has to step off for um, another meeting. I appreciate you for attending. And I wanna let everyone know, we're gonna go over a little bit early. So if you can stay with us for a few more minutes, go ahead and stay with us, plan accordingly. But if you have to jump off, I do wanna encourage you to use the composition book that was a part of the um, invitation that we sent out. We do want those books back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We would love for you to actually go through the workbook and do the exercises in the workbook and return it to me, Maline Jackson at MontgomeryPlanning.org. My email is on, on the cover sheet of the, of the booklet, and we want to encourage you to use those booklets as much as possible. We realize that at, at some times it's really difficult to, to be in this listening session and do the book at the same time, but I do want to encourage you to, um, to use those booklets. We do want you to return those booklets to us if you complete them. Ariana, I see that you wanted to say something real quick. Well, I was gonna say, you asked me to summarize in kind of a spoken yes. word style. Um, there's a lot, so I grabbed pieces of it. Um, food to thrive, food plus culture equals happiness, travel for ingredients, international supermarkets, plus fresh fruit, local farm, global foods, searching, finding, no draw for restaurants, change this. Classes for kids build habits, inconvenience, need more groceries, wine bar to relax and be, chickens for food, chickens with friends, salty, crunchy, nutty, gooey, scrumptious, spicy, sweet, sour, fresh, warm, smooth, foamy, and like a hug in a mug, values the food and the people, grow, process, delve, prepare, serve. Everybody, let's snap it up, snap it up. <laughs> that Very was beautiful. Nice. Ariana, thank you for blessing us with that. If you could do us a favor too, and I, I noticed that you were reading on, on a piece of paper, I think, um, but if you could also send it to us in words, you might find that in some of our, um, our documents. Um, but for, more specifically for the listening session, we just wanna make sure that we have that in, 
um, as, a, as a reminder of this moment in time. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, we are wrapping up this session. It is now 1128. I have said that we're going to go over. We're going to probably go over about 10 minutes. I'm going to take three minutes to kind of walk through the rest of my slides. Lauren, if you don't mind bringing those up, I just want to make a few points and kind of summarize where we are in our process right now, what some of the things that we've been doing, um, meaning these listening sessions. Really, next slide. Yes, these listening sessions have been a great use of our time. We've been listening, we've been hearing, uh, we've built you know, some tools that we can then use to keep listening and to keep hearing from you guys. Uh, we have a great picture. We are using these photos um, because we want to let people know that we are here and we want people to, to uh, reach out to us as much as possible. Next slide. And um, one of the major takeaways, this was the slide that I was going to use for the photo, but we've already taken the photo. I do want to remind us that community um, can happen in community gardens. I think uh, one of the biggest takeaways from this conversation, one is our mindset around um, global foods and, and international foods. Um, I sometimes get intimidated when I go into a global foods or I have a food way like right uh, close to where I live that has a lot of international foods. But it's an opportunity for us to learn. It's an opportunity to, to grow into different cultures and to have a better understanding of each other. So we can we can learn in community gardens. We can learn in um, whether we have uh, farmers markets. But when we come together, we learn about the diversity of our community. It makes us stronger. Next slide. Um, I want to also acknowledge uh, Story Tapestries and say thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging in there with all four sessions with us. Um, we could not have done this without you, sincerely. I hope that you hear the love in the voice, in my voice, that uh, we really appreciate your support in navigating um, these conversations, facilitating these conversations, providing the composition books, which we hope to continue to use at least for the next six months, please, please, please do use your composition book and send it to us. Next slide. Um, in the process, we are listening. I like to think of the listening stage as the getting to know you phase. We are getting to know the community. We want to know as much as possible before we can start visioning and creating the vision for the master plan, which should happen sometime in the summer of 2022. So we have about, we're eight months into this process. We have probably another six months before we get to the spring season. And so if you know of any friends, colleagues, neighbors, uh, people who you work with, play with in the community garden space, please tell them to get in touch with us, um, both myself, Melaine Jackson at MontgomeryPlanning.org or Philip Estes at MontgomeryPlanning.org. Please let them know this is the time. This is their time to, to reach out to us. Let us know their thoughts. Next slide. And here's our email addresses. And so you know how to get in touch with us. Um, are there any other final words that I just want to open it up for either Michelle or Catherine to kind of finish us off before we watch this one seven minute video that kind of summarizes what we hope, what we had hoped to create in this virtual experience. Michelle, Catherine, did you have any closing remarks that you wanted to give? I was just going to say, Catherine, I, don't, I can't see everybody, so I'm sorry if I jumped in, um, but I was just going to say in terms of following up, um, we, in addition to the event tomorrow, um, we will also have a community meeting on December 8th pertaining to the community garden at Edgewood. And I will drop a link in the chat for people to see that. And please feel free to share it with everyone. It will be at, on Zoom. Um, and we just hope to get additional feedback and hope to implement this garden for 2022. Um, so uh, happy to be here. Thank you to the team for including me. And I look forward to what comes out of um, this study and these listening sessions. One thing that's really stood out to me um, is, you know, I think about uh, gardening and food and, you know, just supplying our nutritional needs for us and our families. But um, I keep hearing over and over again community community, community, um, being able to uh, work within your uh, own community to produce some food um, is, is community building. And it's a, we talked about having places to go 
uh, that's a um, it can be a magnet for community interaction. Um, so I I'm thrilled that uh, we as planners who who build communities are incorporating this aspect of community building into this master plan. Exactly. And I've put some information in the chat. Um, we, we are having a pop-up. I wanna remind everyone, we are having a pop-up event. We'll be pushing this out on our social media channels as well as our website, but meet us in Edgewood Neighborhood Park tomorrow, which is Saturday from 11 to 3 p.m. We want to meet you in person. We want it to, to be safe though. So we are outdoors. Feel free to bring your mask, a chair, and maybe a snack or two because we'll have a conversation while we're out there. And so for the last part of this session, I just wanna wrap up with this video. I'm gonna ask Mohammed to go ahead and bring up the video. Um, and if there's nothing else, as you watch the video, I just wanna say thank you again for joining us. Thank you for the team, the village that surrounds myself. I could not have done this without each and every one of you. So after you watch this video, you're free to go. Have a good day. So please bring up the video. I'm Mohammed. so, so grateful you've come to our table. This table is your home and your family for these couple of hours. Especially because we're in the Bay Area. There's a lot of pop-ups and meal series on a farm or on a beach or whatever. The difference in what we do, we're black and brown people at a table together in a black and brown neighborhood, claiming space, and that's political. At the same time, we want it to feel like you're at your family's table. We fuse food and art and justice together in honor of the legacy of our ancestors. My grandmother cuts onions with a steak knife. Um, <laughs> oh, like a really that. dull steak knife. We're trying to tap into this generational survival of our peoples. When you were a child, what was it that your parents, caretakers, or elders gave you to help you heal? And we work with dozens of collaborators. Poets, musicians, community organizers, cooks. The people! Thank you very much. This year, we've been working in West Oakland on a four-part meal series, all with the goal of inspiring action in the world. What we say is we are from the farm, to the kitchen, to the table, to the streets. Because for us, every meal does not end at the table. It should carry us out into the streets to feed our resistance. White supremacy, land theft. Between communities of color, there's so much connection to a history of oppression and a system that has something to gain by keeping us apart. The table provides us this opportunity where we can have our cultures and hold space together. These are candy-coated sunflower seeds on a chocolate disc, referring to a craft that was made in an internment camp. It can be hopefully a way to talk about some really difficult and really personal stories. One of the meals that we are creating <laughs> is in remembrance of Executive Order 9066 that incarcerated Japanese Americans during World War II. We were nurseries all during the war. Flora Ninomiya, she was born in Richmond, where her family have been cultivating flowers for over 100 years. She grew up in the internment camps. This is incredible. I still remember that long train trip. I was seven years old. I remember going to this very isolated desert area and living in uh, the barracks that were uh, built by the United States Army. My father was sent to a separate prison camp from us, and he must have really suffered during those times. He never spoke about his experiences. And for a long time, I didn't either. We want to honor this legacy and how it connects to so many other communities today. Being Muslim and also an international student from Pakistan, to hear Laura's story, I was really interested in her struggle, but also her survival. And she is so powerful. So what I'm doing, I picked these camellias from Flora's land and I am dyeing and embedding these plants into textiles as part of the table setting. So the next course that's coming out is inspired by the crafts that were made in camp. And this meal is so important because it's such a great show of solidarity. And try not to cross. 
try not to cross. Yeah, try not to cross. Like that? Yeah, yeah. The Muslim travel ban and the idea that we don't belong here. That's how the Japanese were seen. We're part of the same struggle. Misha, her wonderful fabric wrapped up our dessert course. I untied the furoshiki and then there was this wonderful dessert from my childhood. And this is a dark bee. Even though we were focusing on and really giving voice to a Japanese American experience, everybody who came just had respect for each other. The Nikkei resistors are opposed to all forms of social injustice. And the sense that everybody's story was important. Nobody mattered more than anybody else in the space. And the food that was served today, to me, is my soul food. So I thank you for that. Can you raise your hand if you're working as a server, working um, and taking care of the tables? We have been building to this last meal called Streets, a 500-person meal down a city block. Welcome, everyone. I'd like to invite you to take your seats. This long table is an imprint. The street is a reminder of what we've collectively been creating together in the face of eviction and displacement and gentrification in the neighborhood. We want it to feel like the living room of West Oakland this afternoon. And as we think about what home and public means... Because this land was originally tea. indigenous land. The first taste is a indigenous tea, and the first honor is to the Ohlone people. Generations of young people can grow up empowered to be Ohlone to be of this land and know that they're home. And the menu is inspired by the Black Panther Party free breakfast program. Cornbread and collard greens and pulled chicken with a homemade barbecue sauce. A salad with a tamarind dressing. These are recipes of resilience. The strength of our communities is at its heart, the meals that we share together. And the Panthers recognize that with the free breakfast program for school children and People's Kitchen Collective, we try to continue that work and that legacy. We are gathered here at this intersection of 28th and Magnolia for many different reasons. 50 years ago, little Bobby Hutton was shot at this intersection. There was a shooting that happened here between the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense and the OPD, and little Bobby Hutton was shot and killed. There were 1,500 rounds of bullets shot into the intersection. There are no plaques, there are no statues, and that invisibility is something that strikes me so much. When there are no monuments here, we hold that memory. We eat to hold that memory, we cook to continue that memory. Every meal, we want you to be fed and your mind to be nourished. We want you to be moved, moved out into a place where you're publicly advocating for the issues that matter. So we're asking everyone, hold a poster way up high. The remedies are in our kitchens. And now we dance. <laughs> Happy Friday, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye, guys. Everyone. Bye. -bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. So no reco recap for this one? No. Well, I mean, we're here. We can definitely recap if you like.